All right, welcome back. So for a second, what I'd like to do is, uh, I want to talk about Sam Neill. Because uh, he's sort of the kind of actor that Midnight's for Maniacs uh, is defined by. Um, he's always just a little bit... Test, test. Test, test. Test, test. Thank you very much, Jeff. Sam Neill is the kind of actor that Midnight's for Maniacs um, is sort of embodies. And the series has been here at the Castro for 11 years and coming up on its 15th anniversary of screening movies that um, were not embraced when they first came out. They often are movies that you, you found on your own and you rewatched, and then, and then you dragged somebody here tonight to try and um, hopefully get married because they love this movie as much as you do. <laughs> Um, this kind of connection with these uh, sort of underrated films. And uh, Sam Neill, you know, he starred in Jurassic Park. But somehow, every, you, no one ever talks about him in the film. They talk about every other actor. Um, he, you know, we can date him all the way back to a truly, truly defining horror film, Possession. And it's one that you should put on your, on your list if you haven't seen. Um, and in, in fact, in that movie, there are, we'll talk, people who love the film will talk about Isabella Johnny, and they'll sort of forget that Sam Neill, he always makes the film that he's in better. Um, let's talk about Event Horizon. Yeah! Right, now while half of you cheer, there's another half who still fucking hate that film. <laughs> um, and, you know, that wonderful read, I mean, that, that always goes into the next generation. And I don't know if you know about the director, right? The, the other Paul Anderson. Uh, um, but he's now a filmmaker that people are looking back on, and they're starting to see that he had genre filmmaking skills that at the time, uh, people rolled their eyes at every Resident Evil movie that he made. Um, but those films, they deliver something that perhaps other movies were
I would argue that Prince of Darkness, in fact, is not even close to being bad. Um, it's, it's very similar to other filmmakers that perhaps use actors for like, their, their pawns in a chess game, and then they're cast specifically to that role. There's an actor in this movie named Dennis Dunn that I would like to single out for a second. He didn't have a very large career in Hollywood. He did make another movie with John Carpenter. Big Trouble in Little China, and he's the star of that film, by the way, not Kurt Russell. And so you walk into a movie that is an ensemble cast like this, you'll see Donald Pleasance. You see a whole lot of singular actors, and while they might not cut your um, you know, acting ability rankings, for some reason we all think we know what good and bad acting is, um, I would argue with you that this film actually has a different tone than what most movies were attempting. And Hollywood didn't understand John Carpenter, right? I mean, the movie that he made after In the Mouth of Madness was one of his largest budgets. It came out the same year. What movie was it? And it wasn't that was an invisible man. Village of the Dance. Come here. Village of the Dance. Now, forgetting Village of the Dance, I'm gonna give you this John Carpenter Lost Themes Part 2 sound. Yes. It's, um, it's not brand new, I opened it, I had to listen to it, right, there you go. You're welcome. Village of the Damned is a movie you'll go and watch tonight because it should be the midnight film, right? It's a remake, people love to shit on that film, and in fact, when you go back and rewatch these movies like you're doing with Prince of Darkness, they are scary. They are truly not what Hollywood wanted. Now, because this movie is so intense, it's so dark, and to those of you that um, are thinking that you're gonna go home early, you have to stay to the very last second of this film. It will haunt you for the rest of your life. <laughs> Before we get into that, I, I, I really felt bad that we're gonna be losing our minds here. I mean, it's like we're at the movie theater in the mouth of madness. There's even light bulbs outside underneath the awning, and, I decided to pull out a trailer um, from a, a Taiwanese kung fu film that um, John Carpenter, he grew up watching a lot of these, these films, and this is one of the most unique trailers um, I've ever experienced, and I collect trailers myself. It's called uh, Thrilling Bloody Sword. <laughs> and, and you can try and track this down. It's never been released in the US officially. Uh, I know you will because this trailer is so memorable, but this is what it's all about, is you coming out to a movie theater, uh, watching the film with actual people around you who are not talking throughout, uh, but we have a communal experience in a movie theater in San Francisco of 2016. It really means a lot to me that you're here. 